This is the storyteller with another hot topic. Treatment. Treatment from others. Living in constant thought of treatment received by you, given from another, is draining and time-consuming, but we all go through it. We concern our minds with things that don't matter. And keep in mind that our feelings, how we respond to things, really attracts the negative forces in the spiritual sphere, like frustration, resentment, and bitterness. Think they have a reason now to sit right down beside us to mislead us and communicate negative thoughts with us. And will have us sitting down, breaking down, crying, depressed, broken, and on the spiritual ropes of Cash Out Boulevard. What? Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that that narcissistic spirit tries to captivate and lure. I know I'm not the only one, but I know one thing. I can see that spirit a mile away and I am quicker to pray when I see it coming. I'm going to tell you that much right now. We have to be quicker to pray and it's not very wise to be idle these days. We have to do things to keep our minds active and occupied, not preoccupied, occupied with good things. We focus on the good things going on in our life, not so much the negative things going on in our life. And yes, it is a battle to cast out negative thoughts throughout the day, but it can be done only if we stay out of negative thoughts that's why unless we choose to labor, the spirit of mischief will take us Valleydale. All kinds of things are presented to us to do, whether it's right or wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, many do the wrong thing in order to make a living, whether to be an asset or a liability. We all have the choice. And with those choices, our thought pattern will be different. There's nothing like a hostile thought pattern. We want peace, even in the midst of adversities. So choosing to be an asset or a liability is essential. But like with anything, in order to understand it, we have to first consider it. And in order to consider it, we have to first see it. And in order for us to see it, we have to look at it and ponder it and be an asset or liability. Trying to fit into society on a grand level of being an asset. There's a lot of room to be a liability. But being an asset, it's not being a schmuck or being weak. It takes skill to want to do the right thing. It takes skill and honor for our God to be an asset. And we all know when we're not being an asset, that's when we have no regard for what God thinks or anyone else for that matter. I know we've had our moments when we say, excuse me, Jesus, while I fall, knowing that you're getting ready to do something nutty. Wanting to work with your own hands and labor and benefit from the own fruits of your labor, there's honor in that. However, gaining at the expense of someone else, many feel that it's an easy way out, which is not that easy. Every move, every word, every deed has to be calculated and planned to a point of manipulation. However, it is laborious, but doing the right thing and wanting to benefit from the fruits of your labor is also laborious and to me holds the greater benefit. It's laborious to want to utilize your talents instead of going out and lying, stealing, cheating to get what you need provisions to make it through a day or through a year, a month, or whatever. Some people day to day, some people plan. And let's not even talk about the abuse and heartaches that some bring into your arena knowingly. That's another podcast. However, the benefits are astounding. So what's a little pain compared to the spoils that are gathered on your behalf, on the behalf of your hurt, your lie to, your rejection, your dismay, your uncomfort, your being treated badly? Don't let it harden your heart. It will pass. Yes, we are beheld as sheep led to the slaughter. However, the thoughts are still prevalent. The bad thoughts, the lies, the hurts, the deceits, the treatment, the loss, the suffering, our past. We are forced to look at it as the enemy pounds and plays games in our minds. We have to get mad at it. We have to get mad at the thought that the adversaries think that we are the sharpest tool in their shed. And the treatment from our past is always what is used against us. Whether they reach back a minute ago, two minutes ago, a day ago, year ago, years ago, days ago, it's always the past that we are attacked with. 
how we are treated in the past, not letting our past treatments rear up and dominate our days and dominate our minutes and dominate our life and put us in a funk, a spiritual broken funk. Taking a stand and controlling our thoughts of what we want to think about, what we don't want to think about, is essential. We have to control our thoughts or our thoughts will control us always and forever because that sphere that we can't see will always have voices to remind us in that battlefield we call the mind. If we don't work and utilize our talents, whether working for someone or as an entrepreneur, if we don't have opportunities to work, our minds will consume us. We would be no good. Led by the mind that says they don't like you, they don't care about you, you could drop dead right now and no one would care. Those beating thoughts saying, yeah, you got hurt again. Don't trust anybody. Don't be so caring, forgiving, and trusting. All people are the same, especially Christians. Then that same voice will say, what's wrong with God anyway? What kind of God would do that? Famous word, it's from an icon that his thoughts consumed him, our brother there. He is now in a tribe among tribes. These tribes are only interested in assets and not liabilities. We all desire the same. However, choosing to be an asset is wise and beneficial. It even has many benefits, but with many benefits comes much hurt in these kinds of tribes. Much drama, much perverseness, mayhem, and all these tribes connected to it, which according to the scripture is innumerable. However, there are those working towards building peace, cleanliness, oneness, and decorum with an origination mindset to build on peace and unity. Insubordination will always upset the balance of a thing, even to cast hurt, and we as humans do take the blunt force of all its envying abuse, mental and physical, self-inflicting, and the captivity of placing in chains both visible and invisible. Both make us live in constant thoughts of turmoil because we've only encountered the insubordinate. Those from tribes living for pure earthly freedoms, taking and embracing every lust known by humans to fulfill. Of course, God is recognized in these tribes. He is simply not given reign to control. Not that he's not in control because he is in control. The only thing that's stopping him is that gift that he gave us called freedom of choice. All about that freedom of choice amendment. Letting go of all those things and leaning towards thoughts. The ramifications of hurt, letdown, abuse, and lies are told to us and on us. Bad treatment, feeling like you were someone's property, and the property owner is a shyster. Not cared for or about, not truly loved. Offered love that was pierced with a rubber band, ready to snap back at any given moment. And what's left but the thoughts of all that drama? Wrong tribe does not a prison make. Because now the thoughts have entered the heart to control it. We must never allow our thoughts to control our hearts. Remembering where the mind is, the heart will eventually be there too. For the mind is carnal and is a spiritual stomping ground for the blind forces to inhabit. They only have sight when we give in to them. Thoughts that still are joy peace and smile. Thoughts that cause us to desire to cash out of this life, never allowing joy to be a part of our lives, never allowing a smile to rest upon our faces, which is our war face. These thoughts that still are thunder of being a joy to anyone and everyone that we encounter. Notice the smiles out in the matrix when you're out and count them. There won't be that many because everyone's busy being into themselves and only judging those that don't do things the way that they do. We all have friends or loved ones that suffer from narcissism. Narcissistic behavior is very prevalent and it is around us every day. Narcissistic personality disorder is a mental health condition. At least that's what the doctors are saying. In which people have an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. Do you know anyone like that? 
They seek attention, but only when they want attention. They are, in sense, introverted. They want people to admire them or give accolades for the things that they decide to do, even if the job is never finished. They think people should be happy that they did anything at all. Their home is filled with unfinished projects. People with this disorder, disorder. This is what they're calling it, a disorder. I call it a dysfunction. I call it being misled. I call it listening to the wrong spirit. I firmly being a believer in we are either led or misled. However, this type of mentality in a person may lack the ability to understand or care about the feelings of others and looks at everyone as being in their way. They want friends only when they need them and will be sweet as pie to get what they want, even down to giving another praise for being a good friend. However, never being a friend to anyone. This is a person that becomes a prime candidate to the spiritual sphere. This person that suffers from narcissism being attacked by narcissism because you have to hear that with your spirit because to me it is an attack and trying to medicate it won't make it go away is always in constant thought unsettled never content worries even though they've worked all their life they can't enjoy the fruits of their labor one is because they've not built any assets because they've spent too much time on liability boulevard or they are afraid to enjoy the assets that they do have, that they have built, always feeling like destitution is always at their door and they cannot be happy. No friends, don't want to go anywhere, antisocial, go to work, be as mean as they can be, don't care, get the job done and then go home and sit like a hermit, unhappy, uncontent. That's unhealthy. That's not right. That is a spiritual attack. Even driving in traffic is a labor and they are easily found by anger, frustration, and rage. No matter the venue, they are on edge, becoming a primary target, sending off signals to the enemy, giving away their own position, and complaining every step of the way that everybody's the problem except them. Too many people on the earth, you will hear some of them say, everyone is wrong except them, and their way is not the right way. It's the only way. They place much anxiety. It pours from their ears. They complain and only want to talk when the conversation is controversial. They are incapable of true passion and intimacy and only require a few seconds of gratification. Honey, you can forget about cuddling up, watching a movie, and hanging out with this type of person. There will be no foreplay, okay? They're not only antisocial, but they also hate their jobs their lives, and take no interest in home life, making it difficult to ever form a romantic relationship or develop a true partnership with any. And for this, many walk away, many leave, and many abandon their relationships. They would rather start over than stay with this type of a person. Kind of makes me question though, this type of spirit is so prevalent among all of us, it's a wonder if we have a relationship with anyone at all. I'm just saying, seeing it on someone else is one thing. Seeing it on ourselves is another thing. And I guess it depends on just what kind of hold this spirit of narcissism has on a person. If you have a mate like this, you want to be happy and are only happy when they are not around, but you want to make it work, then stay out of thought of accusations against them and show great grace and supernatural mercy just as God has done for us. There is hope after all. God brought us through it, did he not? For those that know what I'm saying, you have to hear that with your spirit. I'm just saying in time past, we were a lot worse off than them. Or maybe that's just me. Love the sinner, hate the sin. But in order for you to love the sinner, you'd have to see and consider them. And in order for you to hate the sin, you'd have to agree and understand that it is indeed sin that has crouched itself at our front door. Learn to pray them through it in Jesus' name. And at the same time, remember what is written in our basic instructions before leaving earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, 
and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to reframe from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. For those that have cast away, for those that have walked away, be they so-called friends, lovers, husbands, or wives, mate to mate, stay out of thoughts of guilt. God has given permission and advice in our basic instructions before leaving earth. Time and place for everything. Remember, time and a place for everything and the season for everything. And if it's not in God's season, then it is agitation. And we don't have to feel any kind of way about it. Live, laugh, smile, and repeat. This is the Storyteller with another hot topic. Subscribe to keep up to date.